everyone. Um, so we're going to go over uh, the problems that are on the extra practice. Um, I think we got these in lab. At the top, it should say uh, review for one-way ANOVA for independent samples and related samples. Um, and you can find that if you didn't uh, receive it in class in the Unit 3 module under, I believe, handouts or extra practice, something like that. Um, but anyways, I'll, I'll read the, the problem so you know which one we're working on. We're working on number one. Uh, a clinical psychologist examines how clients who have been diagnosed with major depressive disorder fare when they reject taking medications uh, in conjunction with talk therapy and elect to address their illness through talk therapy alone. The scores below reflect the client's scores on a standardized scale that rates an individual's degree of depression on a scale from 1 to 10, where higher scores indicate more depression. Assume an alpha level of 0 0.01. So the first thing we want to highlight from that little thing is uh, that we have an alpha level of, of 0.01. <clears throat> um, and we want to go ahead and we want to know is this between or within subjects. Um, so if you look at the chart, it says right here before, I don't know, I can't really tell, before, uh, after six months, after 12 months, and after 18 months, and, and client A experiences all of them. So that should tip you off right there that this is a within subjects design uh, because they experience every single one of the conditions. Um, so now I want to go ahead and make a null hypothesis for, for this. And it'll pretty much, you know what a no hypothesis is. There's no difference. Um, you verbalize it something like this. Uh, you know, among clients diagnosed with uh, major depressive disorder who have elected to receive talk therapy only to treat their illness, there will be no difference in their scores on a standardized scale of depression administered before they begin therapy, six months after, uh, six months after six months of therapy, after 12 months of therapy, and after 18 months of therapy. Um, and you to make sure you have all the things you want to include in there, uh, on the front of this handout is, you know, bullet by bullet what you need. You know, you want to know what groups are being compared, um, which is like the independent variable and the levels of the independent variable. You want to know uh, what is being compared about the groups, which is the dependent variable. In this case, the uh, standardized, um, depression scale, uh, you want to know the predicted significance of the outcome, which for a no hypothesis, there's none. Um, there's no, there's no significant difference. And you want to know whether it's between or within. So if you, what I just said there, uh, hit all those points in one way or another, you can verbalize it in a million ways, but just make sure you hit those four points. Um, now we want to talk about a alternate hypothesis. And this is pretty much, you know, there is a difference. Um, so it should sound something like this, you know, um, among clients diagnosed with uh, major depressive disorder who have elected to receive talk therapy only to treat their illness, there will be a, a difference in their scores on a standardized scale of depression administered before they begin therapy, after six months of therapy, after 12 months of therapy, and after 18 months of therapy. So the key word is there. Um, there will be a significant difference in standardized uh, scale depression score. Um, so now that we have that, now that we have the null and the alternate hypothesis, it's time to start putting numbers in. Um, and there's, it, there's not really a step-by-step -step way to do it. Uh, and by that I mean you can do it, uh, you can figure out the numbers in whatever order you like. I'm going to show you the way I do it. You know, you might want to calculate the T's before uh, the, the P's. but since this is a, um, a related subject design, that means we have to calculate P, right? So I just go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and calculate P. So for P is, uh, here's how I calculate P. You pretty much just go across. So I don't know if you can see here, but for example, for client A, you go across here. So you would add eight, six, five, and six. All right, um, that would give us 25 for client A. Um, now you can go through and add these all by yourself. I already went ahead and did it, um, but uh, let's go ahead and do that. So for client A, P for client A is gonna be 
25. All right, P for client B is also going to be 25. Uh, P for client C is 32. P for client D is 30. F, or sorry, P for uh, client F is 31. Whoa, hold on. I'm sorry, E is 31, F is 30, G is 32, and H is 31. All right, so just know that you get that P by adding up all the scores for participant across all the conditions, right? Whereas, I mean, I'm not even going to T, we'll go to T later. Um, so now that we have P right here, uh, you probably won't be able to see it because I don't have a, a somebody manning the camera. Um, but now that we have all the P's, the next thing to calculate is P squared. Okay, so, I mean, obviously all you have to do is just square this number right here. So 25 squared is 625. Um, so 625 again. Uh, 32 squared is 1024. And 30 squared is 900. 31 squared is 961. And you know, we have 900 again, and we have 1024 again, and we have 961 again. Alrighty. So now that we have uh, P and P squared, the next logical step is to go to P squared over K. Um, everybody knows by now that P or that K stands for number of conditions. And if we look at the at the sheet, um, here you go. You have one, two, three, four conditions. All righty. So, um, so what we're going to do now is take these numbers right here and divide all of them by four, right? So, there we go. And we do that. Um, again, I've already got the answers, but you can pause it here and figure it out. Do it step by step. That's how I uh, recommend you doing it. Um, but anyway, so P squared over K um, is going to be, for A, is going to be 156.25. And again, 156.25, the same number. It's going to be 256 for client C. It's going to be 225 for client D. It's going to be 240. 0.25 for client E, uh, 225 again because the same number for client F, um, two, 256 for client G, and 240.25 for client H. Okay, so now we pre we've knocked out all of the P's that we need to do, and we only do P P's for within uh, subject design. So now we're going to pick up where we left off, pretty much what we do with all of them, um, with, uh, within or between. We're going to calculate the T, right? Um, and we're going to calculate the T for before, uh, six months after, 12 months after, and 18 months after. Okay? Um, so whenever we calculate the T for before, um, and again, this is, how you do, this is how you do it here. Okay? Uh, P, you went across, right? So T, I don't even know if you can see this or not, but T is you're going down. So you, ca you add all these scores up right here for each, uh, for each condition. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be the T for before is going to be 72. Uh, the T for six months after is 56. The T for, 40 for um, 12 months after is 48. And the T for 18 months after is 60. All right, next up. Square that, okay? So we're gonna come down here and square that. So 72 squared is, big number is uh, 5,184. Uh, 56, I mean, you probably can't see this anyways, but it looks bad. 56 squared is uh, 3,136. 48 squared is 22,304. And 60 squared is 3,600. Okay. Um, wow, that's a bad line. Fix it up. 
So now that we got t, we got we squared t. Now it's time to divide t by little n. Alrighty. Um, and little n in this case is n common, right? And um, and that's going to be so you you just count up the number in each in each condition. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so eight. So little n is eight. So we um, they're all going to be the same as n common here. So divide all of them by eight here, and you're going to get t squared over n. Okay. So t squared over n for before is 648. T squared over n for six months after is 392. Uh, for 12 months, it's 288. And for 18 months, it's 450. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is calculate uh, the sum of x squared. Okay. Um, and to do this, it, you know, it's it's different from t because you think this is sum of x squared, right? Because that, that's what it is. You sum all of the x's and you square. But that's that's not the case. Um, what we're doing here is your run of the mill. Uh, sum of x squared. So that's going to look a little bit, so that what we're going to do there is, let's see here, so we're going to take 8 squared, right, add that to 7 squared to 10 squared, so we're going to square all these and then add that up, right? So for before, um, it's going to be 6.56. All righty. Six months after is 400. Uh, 12 months after is 2.92. And 18 months after is 4.58. Um, so here we go. We're, we're plugging in numbers one at a time. We're doing a good job. Um, now let's go ahead and start to uh, figure these out here, your K, your, your, your grand, or AKA uh, G, your N, your G squared, all this stuff. And if you notice, um, I went ahead, and this is what I, I would do on your note card, um, is just fill this out, right? You have the whole chart here, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, and mean square uh, for between conditions, within conditions, uh, between subjects, error, and total. Now note, this is gonna be different for the independent uh, group design. Um, you're not going to have the, the um, between subject or error. So, you know, whenever you take, you know, keep that in mind whenever you're making a note card. I also went ahead and had like the outline to, to show how to make the APA statistical statement right here, like just what you plug in, right? Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need these up here in order to get these are down here. So let's go ahead and knock these out. So. K, I mentioned earlier, is the uh, number of conditions. Um, so how many conditions do we have? We have four. We have the before, six months after, 12 months after, 18 months after. All right, so K is four, four. Right here. So now we're going to figure out G. Uh, G, you just pretty much add all the T's together, right? And so if we add all the T's together, which are 72, 56, 48, and 60, we're going to get... 236. All right. Uh, so n is the number of squares. I mean, you can cal calculate this uh, several different ways. You know, since there's eight clients and there's four different conditions, um, eight times four gives you n. Or what you can do is just actually sit there and count each one of the scores, right? And I just if you if you do that. You get 32 uh, for n. Okay. And uh, so now we're going to do uh, g squared. And we're just, you know, taking this number, squaring it. Okay. So uh, 236 squared is going to be 55,000. Uh, what else? 696. Okay. 
So now that we have that, we're going to get g squared over m. So we can just write this formula out here. Um, so 55,696 divided by 32. And that gives you 1,740.5. Okay. That's how I got G squared of N. Just, you know, put it in there. Um, so now let's do the sum of T squared over N. So for this, all we have to do is come here. There's T squared over N. We're just going to add all these together. Okay? We're just, that's all we're going to do. Just add them together. And uh, you get, let's see here, 1,778. Okay? So now we need to figure out uh, sum of x squared all. And again, we're going to do the same thing. This is sum of x squared over here. We're just going to add all these together, all these right here together. And that should give you 1806. OK. Now we have uh, the sum of p squared over k. And we just come over here. Let's see. Oh, well, we just. Uh, Take all these numbers right here and add them together. Okay? So all the numbers in this column for p squared over k, we're just going to add together and we get 1755. Or 1755. Okay? So now we, we as uh, Dr. Dale likes to put it, we've uh, we prepared our, all of our ingredients. Time to put them in the frying pan. Let's get cooking. <laughs> um, so now what we, what we want to do is go and um, and do the chart, okay? Um, and the way I like to do it is, you see I have it here, I like to just um, kind of keep it in that format. You see what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll show you. Um, okay, so, so right here, so S, S, B, C, or between conditions, is equal to um, sigma t squared over small n minus g squared over big N. Okay? So we're just going to go up here and, and take those numbers and put it into the pan. All right? So we have uh, 1,778 minus... Uh, Let's see here, 1,740.5, okay? And that is going to give you, uh, let's see here, I have it down, 37.5. Okay, so sum of squares between conditions uh, equals 37.5. All right, so just write that down because I'm going to need to erase it. Um, so take 35, okay, or 37.5, and uh, put it right here, okay. Now we need to find, um, you can do it either way, you can go figure it out across or just go down. Um, I, I like to just go across. So next we're going to go sum of squares within conditions. Okay, so sum of squares within conditions uh, is just the sum of all the sum of squares. Okay, and if you look at your chart, she gives you the sum of squares right here. So you're just going to add these, you know, simple as that. Don't make it too complicated. Just add those right there across, okay. Um, so it's going to be 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8. Okay, and that's going to uh, give you 28. Okay, so sum of squares within conditions is equal to 28. All right, so I'm going to go here, put it 28. So write that down if you need to, pause it, somebody erase it. Alrighty. 
So now let's do sum of squares between subjects. And you only do sum of squares between subjects with a related group, a uh, also known as a within group. That's another thing too. I would go ahead and all the names for each one of the uh, types of um, design just group them together. You know, so like independent, like for you know for between would also be independent would also be like yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're you're on there an exam day and you're so anxious, you know, and all of a sudden you see related groups and you're like, oh man, what is related groups? Just write it down in your note card. Related groups, that's also within subject design, okay? So anyways, back to uh, sum of squares between subjects. And uh, this one is sigma p squared over k minus g squared over n, okay? So just plug that in there. We have that over there. So uh, 1,755 minus uh, 1,700. 40.5, okay, and that gives you, let's see here, 14.5, uh, okay, so sum of squares between subjects equals 14.5, all right, so we're going to plug that in over here, okay, so write the math down if you need it, pause it, moving on. Okay, so now we need sum of squares error. Okay, and uh, that is equal to uh, sum of squares within conditions minus sum of squares between subjects. Right, it's right over there. Um, so we just plug that in, we already have these two numbers. So within conditions is 28 uh, minus uh, between subjects, which is 14. Okay, 28 uh, minus 14.5 is 13.5. Okay, so sum of squared error is equal to 13.5. All right, so we're going to plug that in over here. Um, so yeah, pause if you need it. We're going to move on. Alrighty, now we're going to do uh, sum of squares total. Okay. And sum of squares total is equal to sum of x squared all right there, uh, minus g squared over big N. Alright, and we have that up there as always. So uh, 1806 minus. Uh, 1740.5 okay and uh, that gives us 65.5 so sum squares total equals 65.5 and um, and now remember in independent subjects design if you added these two right here uh, they'll give you this um, it's it's the same so we're gonna add those two right there and I didn't do this before so um, <laughs> we're going to uh, do so yeah so 37.5 plus 28 65.5 that's the check and we're good so remember the check is you add between um, sum of squares for between subjects sum of squares for within subjects that should give you the total when you add it. So we're good. We checked out. And um, let's move on to degrees of freedom. Okay. So now let's go. Let's see. Let's check. Um, the formula for degrees of freedom is for degrees of freedom between conditions. So degrees of freedom between conditions is uh, k minus 1. k is the number of conditions. It's 4. We have 4 different conditions. Minus 1 equals 3. So degrees of freedom between conditions is equal to 3. 
Okay, so we're going to plug that in over here. And uh, hopefully you see what I'm doing here. Um, when I'm done, I'll put it all in a nice little graph or a chart like it is there. Um, degrees of freedom within conditions is equal to uh, big N minus K. Okay, uh, we have big N, it's 32. Okay, all the scores, right? Uh, add up all the scores, not all the scores, but all the number of scores. Um, so it's 32, I explained that earlier. 32 minus four, that gives you 28. Um, okay, so degrees of freedom within conditions is equal to 28. Okay, so we're gonna put that over here, 28. I'm sorry about my handwriting, it's freaking terrible, but work with me, guys. Um, okay. So now we're going to do degrees of freedom between subjects. Okay, and that's, uh, that's equal to n minus 1. And n in this case is n common. It's uh, what all the n's are. It's 8, right? So 8 minus 1 is equal to 7. Degrees of freedom between subjects is equal to 7. So we put that in over here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is degrees of freedom error, something else that was new. Uh, when I say new, I mean in reference to um, independent design. So it's going to be degrees of freedom uh, within conditions minus degrees of freedom between subjects. It's hard to see over there, but um, it should, you, should be in your notes somewhere. Okay, so we're just going to go in and plug those in. So degrees of freedom within conditions is 28 minus the um, degrees of freedom BS, which is 7, equals 21. Okay, so degrees of freedom error, 21. So plug that in over here. Okay. Last but not least, we're going to go with degrees of freedom total. That's equals to big N minus 1. Uh, big N is 32. Minus 1 equals 31. Um, so degrees of freedom total is equal to 31. So plug that in over here. Okay. Um, so now it's time to go into the mean square part. Okay. Uh, mean squared between conditions is equal to uh, sum of squares between conditions over uh, degrees of freedom uh, between conditions. And we can just go ahead and plug this in here. And it's already, uh, it's already there for us, you know. Um, so 37.5 over 3, okay. And uh, when we divide that, 37.5 uh, by 3, 12.5, which is good because that's what's on the key. <laughs> 12.5, okay. So mean squared between conditions equal to 12.5. Did it backwards here, but you get the you get the point. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate mean square error. Okay. And that gives, that's a sum of squares error over degrees of freedom error. I think I might be still an error, I don't care. Um, 13.5 over 21, okay? And 13.5 over 21, let me do that right quick, is, it, it comes out as like, 0.64 to round uh, to two decimal places. Um, so it's 0.64. 
So, you do, so mean square error is equal to 0.64, and we'll plug that in over here. All righty. Um, so now, as you can see, we kind of have a little carbon copy, except with the answers on top, and that's the way I like to do it. You know, um, on the exam, you'll probably just need to fill in the blanks. You know, you won't have to draw your own chart, but this is how I do it. You know, so when we do this, I said it's a little carbon copy of what's below. Alrighty, so, so there we go. Now that we have, that's, I mean, we, we pretty much got all the numbers now. Um, so let's move on and let's find F crit. Okay. So now we are trying to find F critical. Okay. And we're going to go to our handy dandy uh, F distribution table. Alrighty. So it says F distribution table, table B. Uh, point four, okay. Um, and if you look here, like I said, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the top on the top it says degrees of freedom numerator, and on the side it says de, uh, degrees of freedom denominator, okay. So it, it, what that means is in this, uh, with this type of design, it's going to look like this. The degrees of freedom numerator is, um, sorry, is degrees of freedom between conditions as it is uh, with independent designs. But the bottom here, degrees of freedom error. Okay, so this is what it's talking about: numerator, numerator, and denominator. So we plug those in. Okay, and we have three over uh, error. 21. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we have an alpha level of, uh, what is it? I think it's 0.01. Yeah, 0.01. So we're going to go over to 3 right here. Alrighty. And we need to go to 21. So we can't, there is no 21 here, so we'll the page. Alrighty, and so 3, 20, 21, I can't really see that well, um, it should give you 4.87, so that's F critical, okay, it's in a dark face because it's, uh, because it's a 0.1 alpha level, okay, so that's our critical value, 4 point, so F crit is equal to 4.87, okay, So now we need to do, let's see what's next. We need to figure out uh, F observed, okay? And F observed for a within subject design looks like this. All righty. Mean squared between conditions over mean squared error. Alright? So mean squared between conditions 12.5, mean squared error 0.64. Okay, and let's let's figure this one out. So 12.5 divided by 0.64, that gives you 19.53. That's huge. I mean, that's, I, I can pretty much tell you whatever the F critical is, it's, <laughs> you're going to reject the null hypothesis here. Um, alrighty. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to reject the null hypothesis because this is way beyond this. Okay. Um, so there we go. Let's go ahead and write this down here so I can I'm gonna erase this.
Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to find, now that we know there's a significant result, we need to find where that significant result is coming from. And for that, we're going to use Tukey's HSD test. Okay. Uh, Tukey's HSD test is the only uh, time that we calculate the, F, the critical value. Okay. So uh, the, the formula for the HSD crit is equal to Q uh, times the square root of mean squared error over uh, N, small n. All right. Um, before we plug this in, let's, let's go ahead and, and find a Q. All righty. And for that, we're going to have to go back to our little numbers sheet here. And it's going to be in the back. It's uh, uh, table 5B. <laughs> I'm so sorry if, if, if you can't see this. We'll figure something out. But you can see, um, you can have pull out yours for yourself. Um, but all right, so we have K, no treatments. And we have, it says degrees of freedom for error term. All righty. Um, that's going to be what's in the denominator. Right, so um, what's in the denominator uh, over there was uh, degrees of freedom error. Okay, so here we have four conditions. We go here, and what was in the denominator? I believe it was degrees of freedom error, and degrees of freedom error is 21. So we're going to go over to 4, down to 21. Now you see there's a gap here, okay, 20 and 24. You're going to go to the closest one, and uh, the closest one to 20 is, is, or the closest one to 21 is 20. So we're going to come over here, and hold on. So 4, 20. That should be so hard to read upside down. Um, 5.29. No, sorry. Not 5.29. 5.02 right here. Okay. Yeah. So, Q is equal to 5.02. That was a little, little, uh, muttered there, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, anyways, you know how to find Q, okay? Number of, of conditions, or yeah, which is K, which, which is four, and you go down to 21, because that's the uh, degrees of freedom denominator, or degrees of freedom error, right? And since there wasn't a, a 21, you go to the next closest number, which is 20, and you find 5.02, okay? So Q is equal to 5.02. All right. Now we're going to multiply that times the square root of uh, mean square error, which is 0.64 over n, which is 8. Okay. Uh, so when you do that, you should get 0.28. Let me just do this real quick 0.64 divided by. Okay, you're going to get 0 0.08, so let's go down here, 5.02 times the square root 0 0.08. Okay, so the square root of 0 0.08 is 0.282, so 0.28, so 0.28 times 5.02. Okay, so when you multiply 0 0.28 times 5.02, O2, and you get 1.405, so you round up to 1.41, alrighty, and that's our critical value right there, okay, this is HSD critical, alrighty, so 
We have HSD crit. Go ahead and erase how we got that. Okay. So we're going to um, calculate like the, the critical value here. It, here's how you, let me just show you. Okay. So it, it's this should look familiar. So M1, we're gonna need more room. So M1 minus M2 and M1 minus M3. Or yeah, and then M1 minus uh, M4. M2 minus M3, M2 minus M4, or M4, yeah, M4, and M3 minus M4, okay? And these are all absolute values. This is what the little slanted lines mean. It means that whatever you get, if you get a, a negative, it's, it's just turn into a positive. Okay, um, and the mean, you'll find the mean for each one in the little chart right there. Um, so let's see here. So yeah, so 9, 7, 6, and 7.5. So I like to just kind of write it out. And I mean, this is a lot of conditions. Um, on the exam, it might only be uh, three conditions, make it a lot easier. But I picked a more complicated one just to make my life harder, I don't know. Um, so M1 is equal to, what is it? Nine. M2 is equal to uh, seven. M3 is equal to six. And M4 is equal to 7.5. So we're just going to plug that in over here. I'm not going to put the, the sides. I'm trying to conserve it here. The little sides, slimes of things. Um, but it's 9 minus uh, 7. Uh, 9 minus 6. Uh, 9 minus 7.5. Uh, let's see here. 7 minus 6. Um, 7 minus 7.5. And six minus uh, seven point five, and these are all the different combinations, I believe. Um, so usually, with when there's only three conditions, it's only um, only three. Possibly. I'm not sure, but anyway. So here are all the different ones, and like I said, it's absolute value. So uh, here it's two. The difference between these two is two. Uh, the difference between um, here is 3, uh, 1.5, um, 1.5, and 1.5. Okay. Alrighty. We're evaluating these numbers right here with this critical value. Okay? So. I'm gonna go through and put a like a little dot next to uh, the values that are in the extreme that are in the critical region, which are significant. So this one's significant because two is, is you know more extreme than 1.41. Three is this one is this is not this one's not and this one is okay. Well, there's a lot. You know, we're coming through. Um, let's see here. Okay. Okay. So we have a lot of numbers here. How do we how do we interpret this? Okay. Um, so since this is significant, this is, all right. So let's just start with the first one. M minus two is significant, uh, and M one 
was before, okay? M2 was six months after. Um, that means that uh, the participants scored significantly less, uh, the participants score significantly less um, six months after than they did before treatment. Or you can do it the other way. Um, the, the participants scored significantly higher on the depression inventory test uh, before than they did six months after. Okay? And you just go through and, and you kind of use logic to figure this out. Okay, so M minus one. Um, Participant scores significantly higher on the depression inventory test before than they did 12 months after, okay? Because M3 is 12 months after. Um, same thing here. Uh, participants scored significantly higher on the depression inventory than they did four months after. Or, sorry, um, 18 months after. But there's no significant uh, difference between um, in the depression inventory score between participants um, six months after therapy and 12 months after therapy. There's no significant difference between participants six months, uh, participant scores six months after therapy and um, 18 months after therapy, right? And there is a significant score. So um, let's see here. Participants scored significantly lower, um, what is that, 12 months after than they did 18 months after. Okay. All right. I forgot to do at a square. So let me go ahead and put in at a square here. Um, we have the HSD critical, you know how to do all this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, er and erase this, but um, we'll come we'll come back to this later. Actually, I'm not gonna erase that. I should erase something else. It looks pretty full. Let's try out here. So we need to figure out eta squared, okay? Um, the formula for eta squared is, oh, where is it? sum of squares between conditions over sum of squares between conditions plus uh, sum of squares error. And if you're looking at the handout, you got a class. It says minus, but it's really plus. Okay, so we're just gonna plug that in here. Um, let's see here, 3.7, 37.5. Over 37.5 plus uh, 13.5. Okay, so it's 37.5 over 51, and that gives you 0.74. Um, okay, and since this is the same thing as uh, it is square to use the same. Um, criteria for judging whether it's small, medium, or large. This is definitely large, this is over 0.25. Um, but technically, I would put this down as 74%. So technically, change that into a percentage, okay? So, eta squared, eta squared equals this right here, 74%. That's big, that's huge. Okay, um, go ahead and erase this right here. You know why. Okay. <clears throat> so we have all the numbers figured out. Um, and it's time to talk about putting these results into words. Um, and like I had noted earlier, okay, these dots are what are significant, okay, and just know M1 is uh, before, M2 is um, six months after, M3 is 12 months after, and M4 is 18 months after. Alrighty, um, so 
I, I, I interpreted it like individually, like each trial by each trial. Um, and when you put it all together, uh, it should sound a little bit like this. Okay, so now um, I talked earlier about what these results mean. Alrighty. Um, so you can just kind of go back to that part of the video. Mm. But let's, let's go ahead and, and put this into words. Let's summarize the results here. Okay, so among clients with major depressive disorder who elected to receive talk therapy only to treat their illness, there were significant differences in their scores on a standardized scale of depression administered before they began therapy, after, so, uh, and, and after six months. So then here we go. Before they began therapy and after six months, there was a significant difference there, okay? Uh, before they began therapy and after 12 months, so this is it right here, significant um, difference there. Um, and before they began therapy and after 18 months of therapy, so significant difference here. Um, and you, yeah, so there you go. Uh, so again, it's, among clients diagnosed with major depressive disorder who elected to receive talk therapy only to treat their illnesses, uh, there were significant differences in their scores on a standardized scale of depression administered before they began therapy and after six months of therapy, 12 months of therapy, and 18 months of therapy. Specifically, before they began therapy, patients had significantly higher depression scores than they did on the three subsequent measurement points. Okay, so that's pretty much saying here. So specifically, all the all the uh, befores are significantly higher than uh, than all of the other time periods: uh, six months, twelve months, eighteen months. Okay. Um, however, they're also they also had significantly higher depression scores after 18 months of talk therapy than they did after 12 months of talk therapy, okay? And that one is right here, okay? So um, they had significantly more, uh, high, more depression 18 months after than they did 12 months after. So that means after 18 months, you know, it's just not working anymore. Um, no other comparisons were significantly different. That's what you say. So you just say no other comparisons were significantly different. And they know all the comparisons you're making here. So you'd say all that. All right. So now it's time to use uh, the APA statistical statement. All right. And here it is the outline to, to do it. Um, so let me go ahead and, and write down what it would look like here. What you do is just put a comma after whatever you just said in the prose. All right, you put F, degrees of freedom between conditions, which is 30, uh, wait, sorry. Yeah, between conditions, which is three. Uh, degrees of freedom error, which is, where is it, 21. Okay, close that off. Um, equal sign, F observed, which is huge, uh, 19.53, okay. Um, you found a significant result, so it's facing that way. And the alpha level is 0 0.01. And then you put, you put, Eta squared equals 74%. And there's your APA statistical statement. And after all that, we're done with one problem. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'll try to respond to you as quickly as I can. Um, and if you have any questions in general, from me, feel free to email me as well. So there you go. That's number one on the practice uh, problems.